Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Beto O'Rourke, we are sad to tell you, has changed. He's not the boyish, carefree road tripper with the primo weed hookup you might remember from just a few months ago. That Beto is gone, maybe forever. The new Beto is far more serious, even angry. What's the new Beto mad about? Well, climate change, obviously, and border walls, and bigotry, and uptight old people who don't understand that skateboarding is not a crime. Also, that buzzkill Pete Buttigieg, or whatever his name is, who snuck up and stole his spot in the presidential rankings. That was annoying as hell. But mostly what Beto is mad at is Beto. Beto's had some free time recently being unemployed, so he looked inside and came to the conclusion that actually he's a pretty mediocre person, not a good guy at all, pretty much an awful human being. Most people would keep that knowledge to themselves, not Beto. He went on The View today to tell everyone. You did a Vanity Fair cover to announce your campaign, and you said you were, quote, born to be in it. You went across the country alone on a road trip after you lost your election, and you said you, quote, sometimes help raise your kids. These are things in my mind that a female candidate wouldn't be able to get away with. Do you think you can get away with more because you're a man? And do you have any regrets about launching on the cover of Vanity Fair? You're right. Um, there are things that I have been privileged to do in my life that, that others cannot. You're right, said Beto. Male privilege is real. I should know. All those cool, fun things I've done in my life, I only did them because I'm a man. And I feel bad about that. So bad that I've had a committee of diversity consultants draft an awkwardly written statement of moral culpability, which I will now read to you with feigned sincerity in the hope that it's sufficient atonement for my sins. Here we go. The systematic foundational discrimination that we have in this country in, in every aspect of life is something that I have not experienced in my lifetime. And I've had advantages that others could not enjoy. Yeah, so that clears that up. In case you thought that Beto might be suffering from systematic foundational discrimination in every aspect of his life, now you know the truth. He's not. And he's deeply ashamed of that because it's morally superior to be discriminated against, as the rich and pampered ladies of The View, who are also somehow victims, can and will tell you. But whatever, Beto can't help it if people don't hate him for who he is. That's the downside of privilege. People like you too much. All Beto can do is try harder to be despised as much as he despises himself, which he has pledged to do. I have my work cut out for me to, to be a better per person and ensure that I'm more mindful uh, to the experiences that others have had different than the experiences so that I've had. You're that you Vanity Fair cover. Are those mistakes? Would you say those are mistakes, being on the cover of Vanity Fair? Yeah, so, so maybe... It looks elitist? What? What's yeah, wrong? yeah. I, I think it, it reinforces that, that perception of privilege. And that headline that said I was, I was born to, mm. to be in this, I, in the article, was attempting to say that, that I felt that my calling was in public service. No one is born to be president of the United States of America, wow. uh, least of all me. Um, so, so um, and yeah. What about I, the part-time dad thing? Yeah, so, so you listen. You got some flack for that one. <laughs> Absolutely, and I deserved it. I deserved it. Just so we're clear on this, the lady who makes millions talking about herself on a TV show every day disapproves of Beto appearing on a magazine cover because it's, quote, elitist. And Beto fervently agrees with her. Of course he does. There is no criticism of Beto that Beto does not agree with. Back in March, he apologized profusely for saying that his wife had raised their three kids. Do we even know how patriarchal that sounds? Beto does. And he's really, truly, sincerely sorry he said it. Not only will I not say that again, uh, but, but I'll be much more thoughtful going forward in, in the way that um, I talk about our marriage and also the way in which I acknowledge the truth of the criticism that I have enjoyed white privilege. I have enjoyed white privilege. There you go. He acknowledged it. Thank you, Mr. O'Rourke, for your candor. But the real question is, how much did you enjoy white privilege? We'll get to those details in our next round of questioning. But in the meantime, we don't want to give you the impression that Beto is the only one groveling here. Far from it. They all are. For Democrats in 2019, to run is to grovel. Here's Mayor Pete of South Bend remembering with sadness and horror the one time years ago when he suggested that all human life had value. How could he have been so stupid and cruel? 
2015, you said that all lives matter when you spoke um, about two police controversies that were happening in South Bend. Was that a mistake? What I did not understand at that time was that that phrase, just early into mid, especially 2015, was coming to be viewed as a sort of counter slogan to Black Lives Matter. Uh, and so this, this statement that seems very anodyne and, and something that, that's kind of nobody could be against actually wound up being used to devalue uh, what the Black Lives Matter movement was telling us. Since learning about how that phrase was being used to push back on that activism, I've stopped using it in that context. Yeah, I've stopped. How could I have been so stupid? And here's Senator Kirsten Gillibrand of New York calling in artillery on her own position after an NBC researcher discovered that she had once supported national borders. Seriously. You essentially said that you were embarrassed about your previous position yeah. on immigration. Tell me about that. Well, I don't think it was... Um driven from my heart. I was callous to the suffering of families who want to be with their loved ones, people who want to be reunited with their families. And I recognize, as we all do, that immigration and diversity is our strength as a country. I really regretted that I didn't look beyond my district and talk about why this is an important part of the United States story. I was callous. I was heartless. Don't hate me. I hate myself enough. Well, thank you for sharing, Kirsten. Good luck with your self-esteem issues. Joe Biden is a good quarter century older than Senator Gillibrand, who herself is older than a lot of the Democratic candidates. So you'd think Biden would be old enough he would have earned the right not to say he's sorry, but think again. Age is now itself something to apologize for, and Biden did. Biden grew up at a time before human warmth was reclassified as a criminal act, and he's very, very sorry for that. Social norms have begun to change, they've shifted, and the boundaries of protecting personal space have been reset. And I get it. I get it. I hear what they're saying. I will be more mindful and respectful of people's personal space. We could go on with the orgy of apology. Kamala Harris apologizing for putting criminals in jail. Bernie Sanders apologizing for how women were treated on his last campaign, even as he denied they were mistreated. Amy Klobuchar apologizing for once wanting pizza in school lunches, etc. Tomorrow, all of them will be apologizing for something new. In a world without forgiveness, this is a cycle that continues forever. No self-abasement is ever enough. The left has become a kind of rolling inquisition with a bottomless appetite for ritual punishment and humiliation. Tell us you've been naughty. Thank you, sir. May I have another? This is sick. These people have no dignity. They have no self-respect. There is nothing they won't say, nothing they won't admit to, whether it's true or not. They despise themselves. Be careful of people like that. They're likely to feel the same way about you.